Welcome on in. Uh, several months ago, Rebecca and I were invited to do a presentation workshop at a care facility. Um, and of course, with recent events, we were never allowed to do that. So we figured we would try to um, shoot this video and try to share some of the information we would have uh, in that presentation. Now, it, it's always an honor to be able to present information that can help people, but really the idea that uh, both Rebecca and I have spent time in living rooms just like this, sitting with families, helping them, advising them, rescuing them, um, trying to coach them through some of the toughest time uh, that anyone could ever experience when you have to care and support for a loved one, um, we thought we'd try to recreate that for you today. So not to really put you on the spot, but um, you know, in preparing for this video, I thought of, you know, what is the driver, the connection maybe you have personally in helping people uh, support or age um, in estate planning, planning in general, um, what's that connection for you? Ah, um, so that question always takes me back to actually to my law school days. And when I started law school, one of the first things my parents asked me was, um, oh, Rebecca, now that you're in law school, <laughs> how do we take care of your baby brother who is disabled, right? Because oh. my youngest brother, Joe, is disabled and okay. is a disabled adult and they, they care for him, uh -huh. but they, they were also getting older. And so now they're looking, oh God, what, what's the next steps? Yeah. So of course, now I'm a lawyer, they're gonna ask me. Sure. And, and, you know, and magically <laughs> entering law school, I automatically know Correct. exactly what to do. Um, <laughs> but it did start me down this path right. of, in looking at them and looking at their situation and really thinking about why I went to law school, it kind of drew me to this practice area. Mm -hmm. um, and also, it, you know, it was a very personal experience. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know, we sat there and we, I, you know, I did end up after years of practice, walking them through and getting them a plan mm -hmm. and in, and something in place so that Joe has that long term care and we know what's going to happen to him when my parents were no longer able to care for him. Okay. So, but that, that's what brought me to this area. Um, and um, it's, it's been, you know, great practice here. Sure, sure, sure. You know, I, I connect with that, very similar. Um, you know, growing up, all I knew is once a week, we were going to grandma and grandpa's. So, um, you know, that was just, that was what was right. Yep. Not that I wanted to judge or place any judgment, but that's all I knew is that we took care of grandpa and grandma. And uh, who knew? Years later, I would be playing a role in my in-laws yep. uh, and caring for them, uh, even to the extent that just in the past handful of years, we had my mother-in-law live with us for just over two years before we transitioned her to a facility as well. So, um, you know, lo and behold, I happened to be in a profession where that gave me some skills, um, but, um, I, ironically, the, the meshing of those two, those life experiences as yep. you and I both had, and then even the skill sets I have as a trusted advisor, you as an estate planning attorney, um, it really does create that unique, I, I know why you're good at this now. <laughs> now I know why you're good at this. All right, so, um, you know, clearly I think what we're talking about, there's a need, there's a need out there, let alone, I mean, it's got to be a heightened need with, with COVID and the world win right now and the restrictions that, that poses for everybody, um, whether you're in a facility, uh, in a caring situation, aging, some pre-existing condition. Um, I think that heightens, heightens everything. So right. yeah. that's, that's... It's brought a lot of sensitivity, I think, to, sure. to people and, the, and a risk appreciation that I think d maybe didn't exist before. Right. Um, from what I'm seeing from clients who are knocking on my doors these right. days. Right. So uh, even just before we started uh, uh, pressing uh, record on the camera, we were having some discussions about what could we share today that would be action steps or confidence builders for anyone watching this, uh, things to do things not to do and we just wanted to take some minutes to share and go back and forth on on some of those things so i did come up with this list of just sort of three simple things uh, of course you're gonna you're gonna you know a not having a plan and we can talk about that uh b um something i face 
time and time again, just this idea of not having a real conversation, not having a real assessment of what you can do, what you can't do, um, what you have in place, what you need in place. So um, I know there might be some overlap, but that's distinct in mind. Um, and then not to, to butter you up like I, I, anyway, but not using a professional, yep. not having um, a, a, a full-time estate planning attorney preparing your documents and or having some sense of the financial acumen or the decisions that are needed to make in, before, during, and throughout uh, these types of situations. Okay, so let's start with not having a plan. Now, when I mention that to you, clearly it might mean something slightly different to me. What are the first things you think of regarding not having a plan? Uh, so usually it, when I see people that I think of not having a plan, it's usually two aspects. One is they have no documents in place at all. Okay. No powers of attorney, no will, no living trust, no direction, nothing. Mm -hmm. So like that's one place. The second is people who have those documents and the documents don't work. Okay. Um, now why wouldn't they work? So it, it, they won't work for sometimes for a couple of reasons. One is um, the the key to having those documents, I think, work well is you've named proper fiduciaries, okay. you know, your decision makers in there, and that's well thought out. Um, if you do, haven't thought through that process or what that's going to entail or set up those people for success, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to make it very hard and very difficult for them to implement. They may, might not be the right people. Um, so it's going through and thinking that, that thought process. And you mentioned having that conversation. That's part of you okay. know, kind of the, that assessment and that thought process. Um, and then second is, you know, just documents that are maybe stale or old, mm. you know, um, they were done 20 years ago and the world was different. And, you know, so, you know, there, there's things that, that are missing from here. Sure. Just, just in, in gathering some dust. Yes. All right. So for you, it's the written documentation itself. Yeah. Uh, it's naming the appropriate people. Absolutely. You make me think of um, when plans don't work, it could be the assets, how they're titled, that that's a mess mm -hmm. yes. and or so many different things and directions or naming, you know, that that creates it. Now, I would skew my version of plan clearly a little bit different. Yes, it, it is having those documents um, in place, but there's sort of this idea that to me, every family sits in their living room at their dining room table with a team of experts. Mm -hmm. They may or may not know who that team is, but you certainly need it over time, whether it's taxes and accounting, investing, estate planning, insurances. Um, we need to know how all those pieces fit together to, you know, as I've said, you know, my professor said to us, estate planning is trying to add predictability to an unpredictable event. Yep. And so planning clearly is a piece of that too. But, you know, when I think of planning, it is about being proactive mm -hmm. so we never have to be reactive yep. is, is that idea. Now, what was interesting in our pre-video uh, questioning, we, we talked about what do you think prevents people from, from doing that plan? Mm -hmm. um, what are things that come to mind for you? Um, one is um, people's sense of risk is one. Like okay. they just, it's not going to happen to me I, and I don't have time for it oh. now. Um, is, is that denial? <laughs> yes. Okay. Denial. <laughs> right, not right. just a river. It's not going to happen to me, right? right. Okay. Deni that's, that's one. Sure. Um, the uh, second is um, just, a, a, you know, a lack of knowing where to go and where to find okay. resources um, and knowing that they're making the best selection or choice, you know, whatever it may be, mm -hmm. and that, you know, they want to feel informed and, okay. you know, just spending the time sure. so they feel informed before they make a decision. Um, sometimes cost can be a factor okay. too um, for that. And, you know, usually it's events that people experience, whether it's something like COVID, which makes oh. people feel a little bit more mortal. Yeah. Um, to make them think about, hey, you know, I really need to do something, um, or other events happen to their near and dear ones. Okay. They, you know, they have a parent who, hmm. you know, goes through a process, or they have a good friend whose parent goes through a process, and it starts to make them think, hmm. um, and gets them, you know, sort of motivated to start taking some some action. Okay. Um, so as a planner, at least, that's what I see. Those are the type of people when are come and start knocking on my door. Mm -hmm. um, 
people who work with you mm -hmm. and start with you, which is, hey, I need to get my finances in order, which usually tends to be a bigger priority. Sure. And those, you know, it's it's you who often get people to start thinking, hey, I need my estate plan too. Yeah. And implement it so that's part of my overall okay. picture. Missing any of those pieces. Yes. Yep. So my little spin or take, or as, I, as I've experienced, is there's a little bit of sticking their head in the sand a bit. And that could be fear. It could mm -hmm. just be they don't know. Mm -hmm. um, it could be what does an attorney cost? Right. What does a facility cost? Right. Um, you, again, I'm going to be biased here. I think sticking their head in the sand is the worst thing. Yep. I'd rather, you know, even if we're somewhat unprepared, I'd rather know that I'm unprepared versus here, here's what's worse. What's worse is facing any of these things in crisis mode. Yeah. And, and, and when I mean that is when mom or dad falls down or somebody yeah. gets in that car accident or whatever it is, when, the, when we can't have the space and time and freedom to think clearly um, and do those things. It's always better to try to do it ahead of time. So anyway, that, yep. that was that topic of a plan. Yep. Let me transition a bit. Um, not having a real conversation or assessment. Mm -hmm. um, what comes to mind when I mention that? Yeah, so one of the things I, I encourage my clients to do, and I know you do it as part of doing that assessment, aside from doing that assessment with you know your group of professionals, it's bringing your family members into that conversation okay. as sure. well. Like I think that's a very important element, and it's one that some people hesitate on, either because it's you know personal, it's private. They're talking about their health, they're talking about their finances, you know. Right. Um, but especially as an individual does get older, you know there is you know, and you start feeling a little bit maybe more. There's going to be that transition, and it's mm -hmm. coming at some point sure. or another. Um, so bringing family members in telling them what the plan is, sharing kind of expectations, because you're exactly right. That time when that other person has to come in and make a decision, which is usually when there's been some kind of accident, right. that something bad has happened, and so emotions are high mm. anyway, Yeah, that's the worst time to, to be thinking about these things for the very first time. Right. Versus when you're there and in a calm environment and can think through, you know what what's the plan what's the goal what are our priorities you know okay. has have things been lined up sure i my uh my, my bluntness on this topic is time and again when, when when i sit down with people sometimes they're bringing to me a mess yeah. a mess and it could be very paralyzing to go mom and dad didn't prepare or we didn't have everything in order Again, that almost gets to the head in the sand thing. And I, I'd still say it's better to come in and start working through that. But just the same, sometimes we are subject to poor planning. Yeah. And that, that may have limitations. It may not, but clearly let's go through that. I think of another thing as well, and this gets to like so much that at least the way I approach planning is, you know, it's so much more than just investments from my, in my world where understanding your limits your skill set your capabilities to help care for somebody yeah. um you may or may not be able to there's an impact on the rest of your family your well-being mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and and really in planning when words like independence or dignity come up they mean something yeah. and uh just the same um like I, there was a, a piece that you were touching on our own pride mm -hmm. can get in the way sometimes on, on either end, yeah. let alone add in a little dementia, faculty assessment, uh, um, any, any depreciation in that skill set for mom and dad and everything else. It can be, you know, I, I was going to say, it's a, they call it a powdered butt syndrome. You know, once mm -hmm. you powder someone's butt, you can't take <laughs> advice from them. So you have that too. All right. So the third thing um, for me, I just get to using a professional and I, I would start, I start more, you know, more talking about a state planning specialist right. because I know words like elder law attorney yeah. or, yep. or different things start to say that and we all have a bias and sometimes those are loaded words. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll share my opinion. But what, when I set out to 
develop my team of specialists, of, of which, of course, Rebecca is one. Um, I wanted the best estate planner. Not somebody who does a little DUIs, a real estate closing, a little business mm -hmm. planning. Okay, I, I just formed my estate plan. I wanted the best of the best. Um, and I wanted it so I felt safe and protected. And I wanted that same level for all of my clients. Like in my mind, I'm the guardian of their plan. I'm the guardian of their values, dreams, goals, hopes, fears to, as I said, try to make them happen. So in my mind, you get back to an estate planning attorney mm -hmm. um, who not only drafts documents, supports those documents, you know, um, and let alone you love, you know, sort of knock on wood, the idea of, and that they work so they don't have to support them, that's even better. But right. when, when I say uh, use a professional, right. what, what rings true or do you have a different slant on that? No, absolutely. Certainly for kind of the, the planning process and the estate planning, you mentioned elder law lawyers. So, you know, in, in that practice area, a lot of elder law lawyers, what they tend to specialize in, and there are exceptions to, I mean, they certainly a lot of them do drafting and planning, but they tend to be a bit more Medicaid, Medicare specialists. Sure. You know, that's an area because those are, those are the people who are going to need it, you know, mm -hmm. and those are highly technical rules and you, you need someone who is a specialist if that's the type of thing you're going to do. But just be aware when you're going to do that, it's because you are expecting and needing, believing you're going to be in a situation where I'm going to have the government has to pay for my care because right. I lack resources to be able to do that myself or other th things to do that. That's that type of planning. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that also means when it comes to the type of care, the facility, the placement, all of those, you're then having to be in situations where they take, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, or, and they, or they have a program right. for that. And that varies from facility to facility. Mm -hmm. um, so just, it's to be aware of mm -hmm. that. You know, there certainly are those specialists out there and they are needed at time to time. Sure. But they're not appropriate, I think, for everyone. Right. Um, yeah, in, in that, so just be aware of what kind sure. of specialist you, you need. Well, and that's where, even though, you know, clearly many people could watch this with, with all different backgrounds. Right. So clearly we're not trying to make very right. specific individual legal advice, right. of course, you know, seek counsel. Um, and, and or when I, when I, I'm repeating myself, but the idea that you have a team, you have a trusted team that can all work together, create mm -hmm. some synergy to, you know, reduce it. You just, you can't ignore the COVID world we live in right now, but anything else at some level, the intensity level that when you have a team who can all work together, professionals working together to just re reduce it a bit. Mm -hmm. So you can make the best decisions within that and not this, Yes. you know, just, just that idea is a better world. Right. It is a better existence uh, to me or a way to go through this, to lovingly care and support the people around you. Yep. And that's really the idea there. I had one more uh, question or thought. Um, in, it was just the biggest struggle I think people have in this arena. And um, neither of us are therapists right. uh, in that regard, yet we've sat in enough living rooms and, and boardrooms to hopefully gain some wisdom and knowledge, uh, make it actionable. This, whether it's making the big decision of, we need help, um, is it a facility? Any of those triggering decisions, gosh, as I said, whether it's pride, embarrassment, my own ignorance, I don't know. What's your take on probably the biggest embarrassment or challenge people have brought to you um, and maybe a way through it? So with that, I think one of, um, and I'll go back to a theme I, 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 I've been touching on, but I'll maybe touch on it a little bit more directly. And that is, you know, part, if I'm an individual and I'm doing the planning now versus, you know, I, I'm a decision maker on behalf of someone else. Okay. Because those are two different roles you can have. But if you're in the, 
part where you're thinking about planning and getting a plan together. The importance of, of selecting the appropriate decision maker for yourself mm -hmm. is so key. Sure. And I've seen this through all my years of practice that, that I've, I've honed a little bit about what I you know kind of share with clients and what they need to think about. Because aside from just immediate family members, you know, someone who's responsible and someone who's gonna get the job done, but someone who's a good communicator mm -hmm. and someone who has the emotional intelligence to deal with some of those difficult decisions that have to be made. Right. And so from a planning perspective, that's the type of person you want to put a name and put in place in your documents mm -hmm. to do exactly this. When you're that person and in that role, like of having to make those decisions, right? The best thing that you can do and the biggest things that, you know, sort of stop you is not knowing, you know, the feeling like you're not knowing what the right decision is. Um, is it you know, best, are you, are you doing the right thing? And usually in that case, my case, you know, again, I'm not a therapist, but usually yeah. one of the things I tell clients is, look, your decision is one shitty decision and shitty decision number two, right? <laughs> it's not a good decision, <laughs> right. right? So They're it's not, bad. right. Right. And so stop thinking about this as I have to get this right and I have to get right. this perfect yeah, yeah. and I have to, you know, do everything just so. Um, because Frankly, at some point, you know, that's what's going to be. That's, right. that's just the reality right. sometimes of various healthcare decisions. Um, so you, if we're talking planning, the best thing that you can do is, aside from picking the appropriate person, is to sit down there again, have those conversations, because what those conversations do is give that person in the moment the kind of, you know, uh, emotional and moral authority and permission that they need mm -hmm. to implement that decision and that plan. Sure. Yeah, so I hate to make it simple. What you just had me thinking time and again, and um, I, you know, I, being on, on this side a bit, I would want to tell people like that embarrassing moment or that trouble in making the decision, like when I'm brought in or, or referred or asked this, I, I can fix I, I can fix this I can add value this is easy yeah I you know I brought our the binder mm -hmm. in the end that we help create with with you to to help manage a clients healthcare decisions give proxy over their financial uh, domain as well is just I, I'm just overwhelmed you make me think of a story where I have this client he's been managing his mom and dad's estate for a while both in a facility and he calls me in in transit a 300 mile drive and he just says hey phil next to me i got that binder and that's all i've ever needed to help take care of mom and dad and, and i know that's what they wanted yep. and so the idea that you know even you know whether you're at that level where you're helping somebody and and in that caregiving or even you're sitting here and that's way beyond anything right. you thought. These are the things you need now yes. and today. So kind of wrapping things up, um, I hope there was something we shared today, some information, some piece that maybe gave you confidence, gave you an action point. Uh, of course, we're always available. Um, if we can help in any way, of course, just reach out, let us know. Um, but that's all we have for today. So for Rebecca and I, everyone, have a great day, evening, night, morning, whatever it is when you're watching this. Take care. Thank you.